Good morning, baseball. It is your boy, NMR Sports, here with my good friend, Frank Helmstetter. One of these days, I'll figure out which side you are on. And we are here to discuss the hottest topics around the game of baseball. And speaking of hot, can you talk about how attractive I look in this jersey for a second? Like, just, you know, I'm uh, man to man here, man. Let's be honest. Listen, You're a little curious I... now. I, I am, and I'm actually, I'm on the complete opposite side of the country from you, you know, diagonally. I'm Washington, you're in Florida, and I, I'm sweating over here, so yeah, I, I think it looks great. Bro. I think it looks great. some heat. We're not going to talk about which name is on the back of this jersey, because, you know, I, I you know, you can't predict the future when you purchase a jersey. So, uh, just let's just say it's a number six, and uh, we'll leave it at that. But Frank Helmstetter, how the heck are you, man? How are your cats doing? I hear you signed a lease. You're, you're moving to a different state and stuff. I did. They're, they're good. I'm sure that they will miss the, the cats really like, you know, consistency in their space. So I'm sure they'll be kind of flustered when we move. But yeah, I'm moving to uh to Denver in, in August. So it'll be a little, you know, yeah. Rockies uh, and around there and go to Coors Field. To finally go to Coors. Hell yeah, I can't wait yeah bro anytime man let's do it fantastic can't wait to use that all right yeah. so baseball exists uh for real this time so uh, a lot of stuff going on in the game of baseball yesterday uh we will get to our angels of course at some point we we control our own show so we can talk about the angels as much as we want but we want to get show some love around the league and um one of the major news stories of yesterday dodgers slugger mookie betts arguably probably a top three MVP candidate on the season so far in the National League. He suffered a cracked rib while playing against the Angels the other day with a little collision that they had in the outfield between him and Cody Bellinger. Cracked ribs can range anywhere from a few, you know, 10 days to up to two months sometimes, uh, depending mm -hmm. on how fast they heal up. So Mookie Betts being out of the uh, lineup for the Dodgers, does this concern you? Because the Padres are breathing down their neck right now. They've been teetering in that first place spot at the moment. Does this concern you with the Dodgers one bit, or will they be completely fine with all the depth that they have? That's a good question, man. Um, you know, I think uh, you're you're right in saying the Padres are breathing down the necks, and that's been really fun to watch. Uh, so we'll have to see on that regard. But, uh, you know, you and I both know they have depth, the Dodgers, and so – um, I think I think they should be okay. I think ultimately this is more of a blow to the fan base because you know Mookie Betts is just such a beloved player, so it's it's really sad to see someone out like this. You know, uh, we both know how that feels as we talked about yesterday. Um, and so yeah, about? man. Huh? No, <laughs> nothing, Andrews nothing. Forget... <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so yeah, I think it's more of a. It, it'll be you know he's an MVP candidate. That's definitely a personal blow for him in that momentum and i think for the fan base as well but i you know i do think i'm pretty confident the dodgers have the experience and uh depth to continue to push forward but those padres are right behind them so we'll have to see it'll be interesting to see because now the the two teams that are playing like the best in the nl west are both handicapped by one superstar player so um uh, it'll be it'll be interesting we we found out last season that the dodgers are in fact human and are capable of losing the division as we saw with the Giants pulling off the shocking upset last year. And the way the Padres are playing, man, I, I could genuinely see it happening again for a second year in a row. Um, when it comes to October, totally. we'll see what happens there. I feel like the Dodgers are more built around that. But, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, hopefully, you know what, get well soon, Mookie Betts. I know Mookie Betts personally clicked on this video this morning, first thing. Uh, you know, great way to start your morning, Mookie. I hope you're doing all right, bud. And I uh, hope to see you back on the field, man. You know, you never want to wish injuries upon even your your greatest enemies. Hope everyone's out there healthy. May the best team win and whatnot. Yeah, so that was God's probably the, the biggest story uh, to come out. Hopefully, we don't have any other injuries to talk about. But we do have one of the hottest teams in the National League right now. The Philadelphia Phillies, man. Uh, I was not a believer in this team coming into this season. I thought they were a lock for fourth place in the NL East. But since firing their manager, Joe Girardi, they are on an absolute tear. They are five games over 500 currently, breathing down the necks of the Atlanta Braves, and they are only eight games out of the division right now with the New York Mets, who we know have been probably the best team in the National League. So my question to you, Frank, was Joe Girardi the problem? Can a manager really have that much of an impact on the team negatively? You know, man, um, 
I honestly am not quite sure what that might look like for the Phillies. I do know, though, that it's pretty obvious that whatever it was uh, since then, whether it be a coincidence or because of Girardi, they are on a tear for sure. So, you know, sometimes it could be anything. It could be a manager. It could be some sort of uh, fluke that happens or some sort of tradition even that a team starts that really just starts that that yeah that that momentum is is contagious sometimes that dug out and so i think whatever did transpire you know whether it was girardi specifically or just happened to be around that similar time they really have turned it up so uh it'll be really interesting to see but uh what do you think well my my viewpoint on managers is i don't think i I really don't think managers can win you games but they can certainly lose you games We've seen it time and time again. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that uh, Dave Roberts, one of my least favorite managers in baseball, I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a great person. I know when Mookie Betts shows him this video, uh, I don't I don't want it to get come across the wrong way. I'm sure he's a great dude. But some of the managerial decisions he's made, I think a five-year-old uh, kid could manage the Dodgers into the postseason and probably win more rings than David Roberts. Just overall, I, I feel like, A bad manager can make a big impact, but a good manager does not make that big of an impact. There's only one manager in baseball today that I can point to, maybe two right now, that are uh, positively impacting a team. I mean, you see it right now with the Yankees. Everybody thought that, um, what's his name, Aaron Boone was the worst manager in baseball last year. hes I don't think he's doing anything crazy anymore. Like He's not doing anything special this year. The team's just better. It doesn't matter who he goes yeah. to in the bullpen. It doesn't matter what lineup he puts out there. The team is just winning ball games. Yeah, it's not because and I he... would. Yeah, I would go as far as to say that. Uh, so I've kind of noticed the same sort of passiveness in Aaron Boone that I saw in Joe Madden, but the only difference was is that the Yankees are just phenomenal, and so I, I do think yeah. that you're right in saying that, like having that, you know, good management is more just about the team itself and uh but as you said having a bad manager could really make a difference as we see with dave roberts you know the dodgers should be um you know should not have just won that mickey mouse world series like you always say they should yeah. you know definitely with their with their roster and depth they should be uh in a you know with more rigs at this point so yeah 100 percent agree i can already hear the dodgers fans in the in the comment section man like <laughs> shut up the angels can't even make the postseason I'm like we're not saying that we're not saying that no we're just saying that we feel like the Dodgers are owed more success with how talented they are. I just feel like Dave Roberts is not uh, squeezing that potential out of this roster. So yeah, you guys, you guys deserve more. That's all we're saying. You know what I mean? Like you guys have such a good team and a lot of depth, and so we we want as baseball fans in general, we want the best for that team, and uh, we just don't see that with Dave Roberts. I think so. Yeah, exactly. So uh kind of interesting i i don't personally think to get back to the phillies which is where where we started here got off a little off track but um i don't know I, I don't really see the phillies sustaining this kind of production with how bad their bullpen is how bad their defense is there are some um you know good some good trade candidates i brought up ramon Lariano as one of them uh he would help them defensively a little bit offensively as well and then there's plenty of good bullpen arms out there to trade for so We'll see if the Phillies can finally make it back to the postseason. They currently hold the second longest drought uh, outside of the Mariners, obviously, with the 20-plus year drought. I believe um, the Phillies drought is at 11 years, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was was like 2009 or 2011 was their last year. They made Mm, it, something like that. It's a little longer than the Angels, I know that, so... Uh, hopefully they can make it back to the postseason, but with the way their roster is currently constructed, I think they're kind of pretenders that are just on a little bit of a hot streak, and Joe Girardi really wasn't making that much of a difference. They were just on a cold stretch, so what yeah, are going to do? Yeah, I agree. All right, now speaking of cold stretches, man, uh, the Detroit Tigers, arguably the most disappointing team this season. I know uh, you can make a case for some other teams, uh, maybe a West Coast, Southern California team as well. Uh, but the Detroit Tigers, man, I thought they were a lock for like third place in the division, maybe even second place. I thought there was a ceiling. I love their manager and A.J. Hinch. I think their roster is pretty good and pretty young. Spencer Torkelson was a top prospect. 
Well, they recently called up another top prospect in Riley Green. He made his major league debut last night and uh, or yesterday in the afternoon, and he had a great debut, man. Two for four on the day, two walks, got on base four times, and the Tigers, the worst run-scoring offense in all of baseball, by a pretty large margin, I think by over 30 runs, scored 14 runs yesterday, albeit against a very bad pitching staff in the Texas Rangers. So with the addition of Riley Green, can the Tigers finally start to get back uh, maybe in the hunt? I, I don't necessarily expect them to win the division, but do you think they could make it back to, you know, third place, maybe fight for second place in this division? Yeah, uh, personally, I see the Tigers as more of a third place team still. Uh, but, you know, if there's any division in which a team like the Tigers could fight back, it is the AL Central, because I definitely see that as kind of a weaker division. Um and with the way the White Sox are playing, I think they could be bumped down pretty easily. Uh, I think as good of a manager in A.J. Hinch that the Tigers have, I think uh, Larusa for the White Sox is equally as bad. Um, and, you know, we obviously have seen a lot of bad chemistry with that team as well, you know. But White Sox yeah. aside, um, you know, I do think the Tigers uh, are more of a third-place team still. Uh, just with the way the Guardians are playing currently, they, they did play well against the Dodgers. I know they lost... Uh, one game, I, you'd have to check, um, but I know that they took some as well. So, you yeah, know, they're playing, they're holding their I own. I think the, the rubber match is tomorrow, so. Yeah, well, they're holding their own, you know, and so uh, I still, I'm still going to put them at third, but what do you think? Uh, it's a little interesting. I, they're just, like, mind-blowingly awful. Like, I, I don't, there's not a proper adjective to describe how bad they are or have been this season. Hopefully this could be a turning point. You know, it's nice to get some of that young energy in the clubhouse um, to, you know, help fire up the rest of the team. Maybe some of the old veterans like Miguel Cabrera have gotten a little, um, you know, too relaxed or just kind of used to the mediocrity. Uh, so it definitely helps to have some young guys in the clubhouse. And uh, Riley Green definitely uh, off to a good yeah. start in his major league career. It's always nice to get that um, get that monkey off your back, uh, get your first major league hit in your first game. And uh, he definitely looks major league ready, at least. Uh, hopefully he's not one of those guys who comes up and has a hot week and then, uh, you know, completely tapers off after that. But they do have a lot of young talent on that roster. Uh, it is a bummer that uh, Casey Mize went down for Tommy John surgery. So that's a big blow to their team. Uh, but they still got some good guys. Tariq Skubal is a pretty good starting pitcher. Their relief pitching has actually been very good. They have some of the best relievers in baseball in that bullpen. Uh, Andrew Chafin's been one of them. Uh, they got a couple of young guys, but it's really hard to name Tigers pitchers because nobody who who the hell knows relievers for the Tigers unless you're a Tigers fan. But uh, yeah. the pitching has been good enough to compete, honestly, as far as their uh, total pitching staff goes. It's just their hitting has been by far the worst in all of baseball. So hopefully they can pick that yeah. up. Um, some of these young guys start producing really a little disappointed in Spencer Torkelson so far this year. Uh, I believe he was uh, definitely a top five prospect. I think he was number one at one point, And I think he was the first overall pick like two or three years back, but um, yeah. we'll have to see what happens. I think their ceiling for me is going to be third place. But like you said, that is a very weak division. Any one of those teams could fall off the face of the earth. And I would not be surprised wouldn't be surprised if the Twins ended the season under 500. Wouldn't be surprised if the White Sox, uh, honestly, anything the White Sox do wouldn't surprise me if they turn into the best team in baseball or the worst team in baseball. Such a weird team the White Sox are it's with a the very, dinosaur in the dugout. <laughs> very confusing team for sure. I'd never know what to think. So yeah, and then the we'll Royals are just terrible. So you know, oh, man. not really any hope there. Bobby Wood Jr. is good, but. <laughs> Not rip really to them bro rip <laughs> uh we do have another guy i kind of alluded to this talking about riley green about hot starts and then tapering off a bit um the former white Sox, actually you mercedes the king of week one of the 2021 mlb season and then never heard from again uh swings on 3-0 doesn't take shit from tony la russa Yerman mercedes Got released by the Chicago White Sox, which was kind of surprising. He was doing pretty all right in the minor leagues, but he did not clear waivers. He was picked up by the San Francisco Giants, who recently DFA'd, or um, sorry, didn't DFA, but sent down their top prospect, Joey Bart, who was supposed to be Buster Posey's replacement. 
So my question about uh, Yermi Mercedes, will we see him on the Giants this season? You know, they're clearly looking for a little bit of help behind the dish. Uh, he's not really known for his defensive prowess behind the play, more of a DH. But do you think we see him this season with the Giants? Well, you got to think if they, you know, uh, sent down Bart, you know, potentially they could be putting him behind the plate. Uh, but, you know, as you said, this, he's not really known for that. So it could also just be a pretty decent bat in the lineup. But um, realistically, I think, you know, he probably will spend some time down at AAA um, and then maybe come up as a later uh, call up later in the season. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean... I, I love your mean Mercedes. That dude is fun to watch. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video. <laughs> he posted a video of him like in his backyard, just like a like a condo backyard, spraying champagne around when he found out the Giants uh, picked him up. I think he's happy to be out of the White Sox organization. Uh, they never really treated him right. Tony La Russa had it out for him. Uh, you rem you'll remember he hit that 3-0 home run off a position player in Minnesota and Tony La Russa basically went to the media and said that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a disgrace to the game of baseball, you know, normal dinosaur Playing the things. game. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. Playing the game of baseball is a exactly. disgrace. But the Crazy. Giants are the exact opposite of that. The Giants are the team. Gabe Kapler says, if, if I'm winning by seven runs, I strategically want to get to the other team's bullpen. I want to put up 20 runs, 30 runs. I'm going to keep scoring. You know, teams can come back sometimes, so... I think Yermin Mercedes is a great fit for that clubhouse uh, with the way Gabe Kapler runs it over there. And um, I, I I also agree. I don't really see where he fits in to this lineup because, uh, you know, Jock Peterson's kind of been uh, the starting DH the whole season. Maybe he learns a little bit of first base. I know he's played a little bit of first base. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I would love to see him behind the plate for the Giants, but... Uh, I think there's a lot of potential in that bat, and we've seen what he can do when he's hot. So hopefully uh, we see him in the major leagues at some point this season. He does have an 801 OPS in AAA this season, uh, so a little bit above league average. And then uh, as a career uh, in the major leagues, 0.4 war, not great, but a small sample size of 240 at-bats, seven home runs, 270 batting average, 327 on base, slugging 402. So he gets on base at a pretty good clip and about a league average hitter with a 98 OPS plus. So um, definitely do think there's some value there. And I, if any team is going to tap into it, it's going to be the Giants. So, Yeah, I would agree. It's, you know, it's a good pickup on their part. Uh, the only question is, is he's going to fit, if he's going to fit on their uh, roster and majors this year? We'll have to see, I guess. Yeah, Kurt Casale really, really holding that, had a stranglehold <laughs> over that catcher spot. But, uh, yeah, and... It wouldn't be a Good Morning Baseball episode without discussing the greatest player of our generation, Michael Nelson Trout. I got a signed jersey of him in the background here with all my other shit in this room. But uh, <laughs> Michael yeah. Nelson Trout, man, uh, he had a fun little play date with his son the other day, also known as the Seattle Mariners. He is quite literally their dad, bro. He, he is the franchise owner he is the operator. He is their father. You can't say enough about how bad Mike Trout owns the Seattle Mariners. The Angels have not won a game this series. Mike Trout has won three games this series. Um, let's see. So four home yeah. runs in four games in Seattle this weekend. At one point, I tweeted out he was four for 14 with four home runs and also eight strikeouts. So Mike Trout is turning into a three uh th uh, a three true outcome kind of guy like a joey gallo kind of guy right now uh, obviously has a lot more speed and defensive uh, prowess out there but if you had to predict obviously we've seen the angels off to a hot start go on a 14 game losing streak not so good we've seen the rangers play awful we've also seen them get hot recently with their lineup uh, clicking on all cylinders and then the mariners you know they had a great second half last year there's no reason they can't do it again Obviously, with the favorites being the Astros to win the division and the A's to lose the division, what do you see going on in the middle of this division? Two, three, four. Who do you think is second place? Who do you think is fourth place at the end of the year? You know, unbiased, real opinion here. Um, you know, I, I asked me a couple weeks ago, I would have said Seattle in second. Uh, but, you know, they, they definitely have a lot of uh, weak spots and they haven't really come alive in the way that I thought they were going to. 
um, which I guess is also true of the Angels. I mean, they started out well, but like you said, uh, knocking yourself back 14 games is not an easy thing to come back from. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, man, I, realistically, this is pretty tough. I, I would, I would put. Um, it's hard to say the Rangers in second place, but you know, I can't really rule it out at this point. So, uh, I, I would probably put them at second at this current moment. I mean, this is how it is literally currently. So I guess how the division is, is kind of how I see it going at this uh, current time. But, um, I have that urge in me to say the angels in second, uh, that would still be great if we could push for that. But, uh, I don't know. What do you think about it? It's, I don't know what I, like after this series from what we've seen you know the first four games of the five game series against the mariners the angels i think are the second best team in this division and i don't think there should be much of a question about that the question is obviously we're without rendon that's a huge hole the angels are not you know really they're not constructed as a playoff team right now but each of these three teams have glaring holes like the the tw- the Rangers just don't have pitching. They don't have any pitching. Martin Perez has been great this year. They have absolutely no pitching. There's not one guy on that team I can point to and be like, "Wow, that is a stud. That is a solid pitcher." John Gray is awful. Uh Dane Dunning I think has good stuff, but he's pretty bad. Martin Perez is having a good year. I don't know how sustainable that is. He's never done this before and he's, you know, a veteran starter. Um Obviously, the Angels' bullpen has been awful. It's been disgusting, and the bottom of their order has massive holes in it. And the Mariners, just as a whole, they have, you know, same problems as the Angels. Starting pitching is messed up. Their offense has been atrocious this season, which is kind of surprising with how good they were last year Uh, and with Julio Rodriguez coming up and playing like a stud. So none of these teams, like, stand out to me as, like, that is the team that I want, I think, is going to win second place. That's... But I love a good reverse jinx, and I got to put the Mariners in second place so they keep losing, baby. Okay. Got to keep yeah, reverse dude. jinxing them. I've been doing it all year. So Mariners, As you were talking... Angels, Rangers would be my pick. Uh-huh. Okay, gotcha. As you were talking, like, that. that's the thing is, like, all of these teams have weak spots, but they ultimately, like, like you said, the Angels on paper as they are it seems like we should be the second place in this division uh and but with all the holes in all of these teams it's almost impossible for me to say like i could feasibly put any order of those three teams in the middle and and be like okay i could see that you know so it's really just kind of me would be if one of us ended up behind the a's somehow but i don't even Mm. i don't think that's possible the a's are so bad that would really be uh that would really be disappointing if it was a. Uh, I'm not but even going to say it. It's kind of interesting to think like <laughs> all three of us are in a state of limbo where you're like, okay, the Rangers are in second place right now. They're close enough to a wild card spot where it's like, are they going to go by at the trade deadline? Because they could, you know, get a little bit of help with pitching. I don't think it's possible to build an entire pitching staff via trade at the trade deadline. The Angels could definitely be buyers at the trade deadline, but we could also be sellers. We could definitely ship out Syndergaard and Lorenzen and all these other guys. Uh, Same thing with the Mariners. They got plenty of guys to ship out if they want to be sellers, and they also have, you know, reasonable holes to fill. So the AL West, to me, is going to be one of the... Obviously, I'm biased, but it's going to be one of the more interesting divisions to see uh, in the middle here if any of us can... um, figure it out because the, the Astros have been struggling a little bit too as well uh, Jeremy Pena found himself on the injured list recently Alex mm-hmm. Bregman's not what he used to be uh, Yuli Gurriel is not what he used to be the pitching staff is really holding them together right now specifically their starting rotation and a few stud uh, bullpen arms like Rafael Montero and stuff yeah so it seems like those three teams in the middle are as much dictated by the way that we're, you know, potentially if they, you know, the Mariners lineup heats up, if, you know, Rangers get pitching, but it's as dictated by the performance of the players as it is by what the general management does with the team. Because, you know, if a team yeah. decides to be a stellar or not, that can also really dictate uh, how they're pushing for a postseason or not. So we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah, it'll definitely be an interesting race to, uh, to watch for the rest of the season. So I'm excited to uh keep a close eye on it of course which i think we both will be 
closely monitoring the AL West. Well, okay, I think that is going to do it for us here today on Good Morning Baseball. Thanks again, everybody, so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, help it reach as many baseball fans as possible. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy daily MLB content. We'll be doing this Good Morning Baseball every single morning for you. If one of us is out, we'll have some guest stars maybe sometime as well, so that'll be fun. Uh, so thanks again so much for watching, everybody. Let us know down in the comments what your AL West rankings would be. Who do you think is going to finish second? Who do you think is going to finish fourth? It's literally a coin flip. We need like a three-sided uh -huh. die from Dungeons and Dragons or something <laughs> to, to pick them. But anyways, thanks again so much for watching. Y'all have a great rest of your day.